Do you know the difference between wheels, pinions and landing pinions in the clock movement? If you want to know, then keep watching. Hi, I'm Scotty from Scotty's Clock World. Okay, let's get started. In today's video, we're going to talk about other components of clock movements. The wheels, the pinions, and also the lantern pinions. This is a wheel from a clock movement. And that's a pinion down there on the arbor. We take up this wheel here and we can see that that is a lantern pinion. Before we start, we'll dismiss a few myths about clock movements. A clock movement contains no cogs or gears. This is a wheel, not a cog or a gear. And a clock movement is absolutely nothing like the gearbox in a car, though some people claim it is. All right, this is a wheel. The protrusions around the edge of the wheel are called teeth. These teeth mesh with pinions or lantern pinions on other wheels in the movement to move the power of the mainspring or the weights up through the going side train to the escape wheel. Right, let's have a look at the other side now. That's a pinion, and we'll talk about that in a moment. The piece there is a pinion, and that's the arbor, and that little piece on the end, and on the other end also, are called pivots. They fit into bushes on the front and the back plates of a clock movement. There's a little bit of excess oil on that wheel, but we'll remove that before we put it into the ultrasonic cleaner. The entire clock is really heavily covered in oil. When we turn the wheel over and look at the pinion down here, that piece there, we find they're totally different in shape from the wheel. Each of these sections down here on the pinion is called a leaf, each one of these individual pieces. Putting that wheel down and taking up the next one. This is a wheel from the American Kitchen Clock. It's actually the maintenance cam wheel, as you'll be able to see once we turn it over. You can see the wheel on the outside there that has the teeth on it we turn it over, we can see different components on it. I've explained on a different video how the lifting lever works and I'll leave a link in the comments section below for those who haven't seen it. That piece there and that piece there are the hammer posts. The hammer lever sits on top of that and as the maintenance cam turns, the hammer lever drops off and strikes the gong. This piece here is a lantern pinion. There, you can probably see it better at that angle. Now, looking at this next piece, it's a wheel from a German-made mantle clock, a Kinzel mantle clock, and you can see the pinion on that, quite different than the lantern pinion. A German-made Kinzel mantle clock, those parts are more expensive to make. So the cheaper componentry used on the lantern pinion is what is usually used on many cheaper or what is commonly called popular clocks. It's got two bands of brass on it and as you can see in between there are small pieces of wire. They tend to be relatively easily bent and misshapen if the mainspring lets go or breaks, allowing the power contained in the mainspring to be released all at once. These pieces of wire are called trundles and are usually made from pivot wire. To replace a trundle is a quite an easy operation. You take out the bent trundle, then you cut a replacement piece of wire after measuring the old trundle diameter and length with a set of vernier calipers. 
the new trundle is then dropped back into the hole again and you lightly tamp it down on the top of the brass here with a punch and a light hammer and that holds it in place firmly because you don't want the trundles to move around while the wheel is turning. So that's the lantern pinion. Spinning the arbor around. Right, now I'll put that down. Now we're going to take up the pinion from the Kinzel clock that we saw before, that one in my hand now. And this other one is a winding arbor from an 1837 French clock. You'll be able to see the difference in size between the pinions on both those arbors. Everything on the French clock arbor there is much smaller. So are the pivots and everything else. And they tend to break very, very easily. So you've got to be quite careful of those when you're working on French movements. That's the difference between a wheel pinion and a lantern pinion. If you want to learn how to service, repair and restore 19th and 20th century mechanical clocks, then subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell.